If you want to be able to buy the most expensive players and open the best packs in FC24, go to u7buy.com to buy your EA FC24 coins. It's cheaper than buying FC points and just as reliable. With their already amazing prices, you can get an extra 6% using promo code INCEPTION at checkout. Hey guys, what's going on? Inception here and welcome to another video. Ladies and gentlemen, today we have a tier list to do. Uh, guys, depending on how well these videos do, uh, will depend on how often we do them in the future. Here's the thing, right? Individual player reviews for some EVO cards and player transfer market cards is... It depends. Like, transfer market cards would have to be, like, the bigger cards. But these videos tend to do better. Um, so we're going to do more of these if the video ends up performing well. The last time we did a tier list was the Winter Wildcard one. And it was a video that did very well, right? So we're going to see um, how these ones do. I might do, like, the attacker, the midfielder, and the defender one today, right? And then if there's more tier lists to do in the future... Uh, then we could do that too, okay? So, at the end of the day, guys, when it comes to making these types of videos, these are opinion-based. Um, so, don't always take everything to heart if you see cards that, you know, you don't think belong in certain places. I just list cards in certain positions based off of how I feel the meta is going to be for a good amount of time, right? So, yeah. Uh, so, as you notice here, I actually have a bunch of the future stars, right? And the reason why I waited to do this tier list was because... You have to wait for all of the future stars to drop because there are some cards that are midfielders that can get attacker play styles that would actually benefit them if you go in that direction, right? So um, we have a don't bother category here because there are defenders and stuff that just don't make sense to put um, some of these evils into, right? So we have to always take those into consideration when it comes to some of these cards, right? So the first card that we're going to have here is Adley, right? So with this card, it wouldn't be a horrible decision for you to upgrade this card to be your more physical oriented attacker to work with a power header and an acrobatic because he kind of has the base mechanics down, right? Uh, with the high medium work rates, six foot one height play styles in game uh, set up to be in a certain way. Like he has Tiki Taka, intercept, technical chip shot, power header with an acrobatic. A card like this as the attacking center mid in a team wouldn't be a horrible decision and if you wanted to use him up top too it wouldn't be bad either because doing first time passes with the physical dude sometimes intercepting the ball it wouldn't be a horrible decision now again for the tier list we are going to be basing it off of some of the other decisions that you can make so for him it'll be mostly a sentimental card that you could potentially put into this evolution to get those specific play styles and make him usable but it's just not going to be one of the top tier options for the most part right so we have to take that into consideration. Uh, the next one is going to be the Almada card. So with Almada's card as an evolution choice here, um, I don't think it makes sense to put those play styles on this card because he is a shorter player, five foot seven and stuff, right? The acrobatic you notice on the volleys, that specific part is very nice to work with. But this card is going to make more sense to put into the midfielder's evolution. And for that reason, uh, we're going to put him in the don't bother category. OK, um, now we have some more attacking options here. Uh, we have a card like Brobe, who I'm going to add in the B tier category. But I'm adding him into the B tier category as one of the top options. So this one I'm actually going to put down and we're going to adjust this based off of quality and the types of players you could potentially get. So here's the thing about Brobe. This card actually surprised me a lot. I just don't think he's a card that a lot of people will unlock for the longevity of the game. But if you are an Ajax fan, an Eredivisie fan, and you want a competent striker up top, this guy genuinely surprised me a lot as an attacker because he's one of the few attackers in the game that when it comes down to his physical presence and his body type, those two things are incredibly noticeable to work with. Like he's a very, very strong player. With this card in game, you give him the power header, you give him the acrobatic, right? And even though he's a low, low worker to card, like this card can actually do work in game. Like when I did his review, we were in like the top three divisions during season reset. And I was actually able to score opportunities with him. He didn't feel like a complete nuisance to use. Now, generally speaking, when it comes to how the card performs in game, you do have to be very mindful of the fact that he's more physical oriented. You know, he doesn't have the five star skills. Um, and he's not as agile to work with, which, in my opinion, are the cards that make the most sense 
for how he generally performs. But he is definitely going to join the top tier category for the B tier, because in my opinion, he actually surprised me a lot. Do I think a lot of people will choose him from the two selections? No, I don't. Right. So I think it's very important to take that into consideration. But like I said, if this was like a Liga Noche player, a Liga Portugal player, I would have 100% have done him because he's actually a really nice physical type striker. And sure, you have to work with the dribbling as it is, but it's not like top tier category. Um, meta in my opinion right but still very good that's why i have to put this card a little bit lower in regards to some of the choices that you could potentially go with in uh in this one right sorry so just had to get the thumbnail ready um okay so cdm mariana um definitely joins the category of someone that doesn't make sense to put into this evolution because you give her a power header and an acrobatic she is a cdm uh that you keep on a stay back while attacking right so having power header i mean it could be cool in certain situations but it just doesn't really make much sense to uh, to put her into the um, the evolutions. Sergio Gomez, similar situation, right? If you give him an acrobatic and um, acrobatic and the power header, pretty pointless for the defender. Uh, Bayer. So this is where it gets a little bit more interesting if you don't necessarily put these guys into the defender evolutions, right? So with these types of cards, it's not completely horrible for you to give them these play styles, but it's just not super ideal either, right? Because with this card, you know, play styles wise, he has block, slide, tackle, aerial, and the chip shot, right? Which obviously is not bad to work with. Giving him a power header for like the corner kicks, acrobatic is not really like super relevant for defenders. Like you can sometimes do like a cool clearance and stuff, but most of the times you're gonna be utilizing power header probably from the corner kicks, right? So it's not horrible to go in this direction if you wanted to. Do I think it's gonna be super ideal? No, right? So it's probably gonna be in the C tier category for that one as well, but it's not like, it's, I'm not like completely against it. I just wouldn't do it, you know what I'm saying? It's one of those types of situations. So again, with players like uh, this, you know, Eric Garcia is also another pretty good example because with Eric Garcia's card, um, again, giving defenders power header is not a bad decision. Um, Sorry, just looking for him here. It's not a bad decision. It just doesn't make a lot of sense, right? So that's why, you know, you could put them in the C tier category if you want, because play styles wise, you know, he's got pings pass, long ball pass, anticipate and chip shot. You know, maybe a power header. I mean, I'm saying this, guys, but let's be real. Like these, I wouldn't bother. Like I just, I just wouldn't, right? Like let's, let's just do this really quickly. Like if we're talking about longevity in this game, there's, there's just no chance, right? There's no chance longevity no chance okay so uh wilms maybe let's see what wilms looks like as a right back because that's a right back it's a little bit different on that let's see so wilms on that one let's see power header i mean she would have to be like a super committing fullback if we uh if we did something like that completed evolutions uh where is she where is she wilms, wilms, wilms this one. okay so high high no she's mainly a defender for sure. You're not going to use her in that way. Also at five foot nine. Nah, nah. I don't know. We do this very quickly. Okay. I, like I said, defender ones, it makes sense to put in the defensive ones, right? Um, center mid center mids. We have to check out in the cams as well. CDM CDM. No chance. Uh, cam right mid. Okay. And then Ugart too. I wouldn't put Ugart into it because giving him like intercept and stuff is way more relevant. Okay. So, um yeah this makes more sense we have some midfielder ones that could potentially be some decent attackers so we could take a look at that right okay the next one's gonna be rodri rodri i'm gonna add into the s tier category from the selections um i don't consider him an s tier card per se because there are certain things that are a little bit weird with the card right so if we check out the rodri card in game it'll be this one here, right? So Rodri is Spanish. Sergio Gomez, Rodri. Okay, so with this card, you boost him to be a five star, four star. So, first of all, working with a five star skiller is very, very ideal. Very, very good to work with, right? Good position changes, right mid, left mid cam. Um, the thing with this card is that he's a little bit strangely formatted for how he gen generally performs in game. When I used the card and I gave him a marksman to work with, if the shooting was the same thing as it was last year, then it wouldn't be as big of an issue. But this year, you notice a little bit more. If you give him a marksman, 
you could boost the dribbling and you could boost the shooting, but then you would lack the sprint speed, right? So giving him a hunter is more ideal, but then you can't really boost the dribbling, which would have been nice for his car because of the way that it works with his body type. Now, the reason why he joins the S tier category, but more on the lower side, is because of the five star skills as well as player selections. Okay, so the player selections part is going to be a really key reason for us to add him into that general area, because if we go to that general position and we go to the La Liga Santander, the only players that you actually have to work with for the current meta of the game, unless you have evolutions, unless you have cards that you cannot see here because they're not upgraded from an evolutions, he is genuinely the only real option that you could potentially work with who is a left-footed player, right? So even if I were to do right mid right wing and I did that and then I specifically looked for someone who is left footed, right? You have cards like Guler and stuff, but like these cards are more sentimental. I mean, 47K for obvious reasons, right? You can obviously get someone like Kubo's card, right? Who was a gameplay objective. So you could have gone in that direction too, but you could see four star, four star. So that's another thing that we would add to the card. Um, in regards to capabilities, right? He's a five-star skiller and he doesn't even show up here, right? Because he's in evolution. You have players uh, like Rafinha that exists, like Oyarzabal. Oyarzabal is probably not a card people would use on a consistent basis, but Rafinha definitely is one of the options that you could potentially work with. But Rafinha is Barcelona Brazilian. Again, there's no evolutions that you guys can see here. So there might be some options that some people went with that, you know, obviously don't exist within the game, but from the links, from the fact that he's a left-footed player with the five-star skills, as I minimize that screen, there wasn't really much to work with. So he joins the S-tier category um, because he has the five-star skills and he's left-footed. Those two things are very, very big variables to work with, okay? Uh, Atenia, very easy S-tier card uh, without a shadow of a doubt. She is um, very, very nice to work with. You know, she was the first review that we did because she was the most popular choice. It's interesting with her because she's going to be one of the few cards where, you know, I'm going to mention what, like, okay, so Rodri's a similar situation where with Rodri's card, you don't specifically give him the right play styles. I will say that acrobatic is actually nice to work with on the five star skills because it works with the volleys, right? But the power header is more so like if I get into a situation where, you know, I have a player in the side position that has a whipped pass and he has a power header to work with. It's helpful to have, but he's not going to be like crazy at doing it because that's not his sort of play style. But acrobatic, yes, but not necessarily for the animations that you're looking for. It's more so just for the volleys in particular, right? Because his volleys are really bad. So giving him a play style plus can be helpful to boost it a little bit more in regards to in-game performance, right? But again, for general meta play styles, those play styles, they don't fit him as much as they do uh, with a card like Brobe, like it fits Brobe way more. But again, for meta of the game, having more agile players of five star skills, especially against the park, the bus, it's it's just helpful, right? It's just helpful to work with. And then obviously he still has some, you know, attacking play styles like technical to compensate for the dribbling feeling weird sometimes, uh, chip shot, finesse shot. Finesse shot, I, really, I don't really care as much about, but it's more so if I get into like maybe like Trivella angles with his left foot on the left side, right? So similar situation to Atenia where they don't really give her uh the right play styles uh with this card right because she is you know more of that uh, like agile attacker different play style pluses would definitely be more ideal again acrobatic plus is perfectly fine because again it works with the volleys and stuff in her case you know the play styles that she is working with she does have a technical to work with a first touch a trickster and a chip shot um, so it's more so what her in-game capabilities are so because she is a five star five star player that's a really huge variable to work with, right? The five star, five star part of the card is helpful because five star weak foot, especially in this year's game, when you get into certain positions, it's nice to be able to take strikes with that weak foot whenever you find yourself in certain situations. So although the play styles do not match her, generally speaking, it's uh, it's still one of the better choices, especially for the links that you could potentially work with because of the Real Madrid players. Some people also went in the direction of going with some other evolutions on the card, right? So there's some that people have improved up to a certain point. Uh, I have a guy in the Discord that actually 
message me and he has like a 91 Atenia card or a 90 Atenia card. And that card might be more ideal because she probably has more of like the agile sort of play styles. But for a free card that is given the five star, five star capabilities, you can't really go wrong with her, right? I still use her in some of the top divisions, uh, playing on some people's accounts because most people chose her, obviously. And she obviously still cooks, right? She still does a really good job. And she's really nice to use informations like the 433 that we recently posted, specifically in that right sided area, right? So it's still a decent card, not the right play styles, but still very nice. Brian, I'm going to add into the A tier category. So yet again, not a card that, you know, the play styles make the most sense for, right? Because obviously power header and acrobatic is not like the craziest things to give him. But the reason why Brian joy, uh, joins the category of the higher tiers is because at the end of the day, these are the types of cards that have more dribbling capabilities. And I think that that is a very important thing to work with in the meta of the gameplay. So even though he's a four star, four star player, high, medium, all that kind of stuff, this card is formatted for someone that you can use in the attacking sense because he is formatted for that. So for people who have been going in the direction of going with the Bundesliga players, um, this is like the main one here, obviously. You could see that he's actually formatted in a decent way, right? Because with this card, you know, if you give him a marksman chemistry style, he is actually still working with some pretty decent pace, right? And because he's a shorter player and his center of gravity is lower, you can actually get some pretty decent strikes off with the card, you know, work with the finesse shot, work with the rapid chip shot, acrobatic more so for volleys, not necessarily for physical presence. Again, uh, like it matches for the Brobe card, but uh, in game, I think that for meta wise, like having better dribbling, having a card that has better shooting capabilities, a card like this in the side positions has different position changes as well, is definitely very nice to work with. But mainly for people working with the Bundesliga links, right? Doesn't have five star skills. That's the main reason why he's not being added into the S tier, because having five star skills, honestly, for meta is very, very important to work with. So that's why Rodri is a little bit higher in the category. But for people who don't care about five star skills, these two are not far off of each other, right? But for me, in a lot of situations, having those five star skills is incredibly helpful to work with, right? Um, Dina Mbembe, I'm actually going to add him into uh, the A tier category as well. Who would I like? I'm looking at Brobe because of the play styles that you give him. Who would I even add that's like higher than him? Hmm. I don't think I mind adding him lower here um, and then removing one of the categories. So it would be B. And we take out C. And then we would do it like this. That's not this. This is not bad. I'm OK with doing this, actually. Yeah. It's a little bit harsh to put him lower because the thing is that the play styles, they match him more, right? But the reason why he's at the end is because of longevity for meta. You know what I'm saying? Because not a lot of people will choose him. The S tiers, I think people should 100% choose. The higher tiers and the A's will really depend on the type of team that you're picking, right? Because of the links and whatnot to work with. Um, but yeah, Brian, obviously, very good choice to work with. I'm OK with doing the tier list like this. Um, so Ferreira and stuff. Uh, it's not like a don't bother situation. See, this is where I, <laughs> I deleted the the row. I deleted the row, but it's like, would I use these cards? I mean, it's it's tough to say because I think that they have some of these guys, to be fair, like they have potential to be better than some of the evolutions that are higher, but I never really actually used them. So it's tough for me to say, because if we take a look at the way that the card is formatted, if you give him a marksman, right? If you give him a marksman to boost his dribbling, it actually puts his shooting in a pretty decent area. He doesn't have acceleration, but he does have sprint speed. And if you look at his play styles, right? He has first touch, aerial chip shot, acrobatic and power header. The card is five foot nine high medium. You know, it, the, the thing about this one is that I might have to add a category here where I just say like, uh, not really sure, because these are cards that like, I wouldn't really consider the top tier meta as re in regards to like the choices that you could potentially go with for longevity. Um, but you know what I'll do? I'll put them in the B tier. It's him and Torres, right? Because they give you the links, but I'm not necessarily saying that they're not as good as some of the cards up top because I never really use these two cards. And we got to be honest, 
I don't really see people choosing them that much for the longevity of the game. Uh, unless they're building some sort of like American team that's going to be good enough to use in the meta of the game. There can be an argument in saying that Ferreira could be better than Brobe. Maybe, you know, I'm, I'm not against that whatsoever. But as I mentioned, um, I haven't really used those sort of cards to like really, really give an opinion on them. Right. So remember that if you give a card like this a marksman, you know, your dribbling is put in a better area. What's his body type? Average body type. So that, yeah, that type of stuff you would have to experiment with in game, right? Um, but he doesn't look horrible, right? Because if I give him a marksman, like he at least has 99 jumping to work with too, with an aerial, and he has the power header too. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, so this is how we're going to do it, right? Not sure, didn't use. Oh, didn't use. Because uh, they don't look horrible. You know what I'm saying? They don't they don't look like horrible options. Uh we're gonna put this B tier a little bit lower here. So not sure didn't use. Um we'll put there. Not sure didn't use. Could be could be okay. Could be good slash okay. <laughs> could be okay. Could be good slash well, did I really put the word? Oh, my brain just shut off right there. Could be good slash okay. Not sure, didn't use, could be good slash okay. I think that's okay. And then this one we could delete. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Because I think these ones are going to be like the top choices, to be honest. Okay, moving on. <laughs> moving on, boys. What's the next car we have here? Okay, so we have Illich. Does this guy have any sort of things that makes me think like, yeah, you know, maybe on the attack it could be okay. Let's see. Because he looks like more of a midfielder type of guy, but let's see what he has on the attack. High medium work rate, six foot one. Let's see, that's where Trivella, Flair, Tiki Taka, Dead Ball, Acrobatic Power Header. Yeah, I'm not like completely against him in the attack. It's definitely possible with him. Dead Ball, Flair, Trivella, Chip Shot. Like, I'm not against this. Right? But that's more for like sentimental value. So again, that's uh that's a card I wouldn't mind adding into the could be good category for the most parts, right? Like, I'm going to add him there. I'm okay with that. Uh, let's see this Loman card. Female player for the Byron players. So not too horrible to work with. Let's see here. Evolutions. FC Academy Attackers. So some defensive stats. Four star, four star dribbling. If I give her a shadow. Okay, so that's the thing, right? So she gets acrobatic and power header, but she's a smaller player. Yeah, I probably wouldn't do that, to be honest. I think that's a waste. Three star, five star. I don't care about skill moves so much in the midfield, but having this, the weak foot's really nice, actually. No, this card has potential. So we'll we'll do... I wouldn't bother with her because she's for the midfielders, specifically. I think she's she's formatted way more for it. On the attack, I wouldn't even consider it. But Adley, like, I would consider it maybe a little bit, depending on the type of team you're building for, like, sentimental value and stuff, right? Uh, Millard, I'm going to add Millard. People, I think people freaked out a little bit more about that card than I personally did. So I'm going to add her, like, I'm going to add her here. The reason why is because when I use this card in game, in my opinion, right, I personally felt like um, with the way that she performed in game, right, evolution wise. So I think if I remember correctly, like she was a five foot seven player. And she has, I think, a lean body type, but it feels more physical than that in game, in my opinion, right? Um, this one will definitely be sporadic in regards to the opinions of different people, right? Um, she was still pretty decent to use. She actually scored quite a few opportunities for me. Definitely a card I would keep mainly in the side positions. Medium, medium work rates is not like a terrible thing to work with, but it's definitely more of a side position player because She's got press proven Trivella, chip shots, acrobatic, plus with power header. Like those ones are not as relevant to work with because she's a smaller player. The volleys will be good because she has good volleys in general. But it's one of those types of cards that, in my opinion, just felt a little bit weird on the dribble. That's why I'm adding her into the A tier because I could still see people using her depending on the type of team that they're building. She's still going to be pretty decent to use. But for me on a personal level, I didn't enjoy her as much as someone like Brian. Dina? Oh, we didn't even go through the Dina card, actually. Okay, so the reason why I'm adding Dina into the A tier category is because his uh, his sort of play style, people were like, oh, what, why do you compare Dina to someone like Millard? I'd never do because they're two different types of players, right? This card, the way that you're supposed to use him in a team, 
I'm going to be completely honest, is supposed to be a specific way. So with his card set up the way that it is on the evolutions for the attackers, this card has some defensive capabilities, right? So I wouldn't put it past people, right? Because if you go here and you go to the evolutions, it's the only option you have to work with. I wouldn't put it past people to actually use this card in the right wing back position if they play a five back, right? If that's something that they want to go for. Because this card is formatted in a way where in the midfield position, he still looks like he could be usable, right? He doesn't have the weak foot, but when you give him a shadow chemistry style and he could potentially be used as your attacking oriented center mid, it's not a horrible option. And even if you wanted to go in the direction of using him as your right mid in some sort of like three back formation, you could totally do that as well. But I think, I think with those cards, because I personally, yeah, I think I would do like this. Yeah. I wouldn't mind putting like some of these guys in their own category, like these three, but A tier, like Brian, I'm putting, I'm putting Brian up because I actually like the Brian card. <laughs> Personally, I think he actually fits the meta a little bit more well formatted too. Rodri's not as well formatted, but again, left foot, five star skills, variables with their team and stuff, right? I think those are key factors to consider as well. Okafor, definitely an S tier card for sure. Um, the reason why he joins, so he joins S tier in the higher category and compared to Rodri, because I think that he is the best choice when it comes to choosing a physical type attacker, right? So from the two choices that you have, Rodri will depend on the type of situation that you have in your team. Some people are not going to want Okafor because of that, right? But chemistry is not really a really big concern, guys, because the chemistry is not hard to work with when it comes to these types of cards, right? Because they have like the three point thing and it's it's not hard to add them into your team. But with Okafor, him like, so the only thing with this card is that for me on a personal level, I'm not crazy about physical type attackers in general, right? Um, I'm not crazy about the physical type attackers with him. He does have a loose feeling to him, right? Like physical type attackers that I personally enjoy using are players like Janola, team of the year Holland, right? Like that's the guys that like really kick it for me, right? But this Okafor card, if you enjoy using the physical type, the type strikers is still an S tier card. I have faced him sometimes and he has caused me trouble. And the reason why he's caused me trouble is because they have, he has three specific variables that makes him proper to use in the meta of the gameplay. Both of the play styles are W's to work with for him specifically because he has the power header and the acrobatic. He can't utilize power header as much because he doesn't have an aerial, even though he has a 99 jumping. I noticed that with the card and that's the loose feeling that I'm talking about. But when it comes to volleys, when it comes to just the finishing in general, working with the physical elements, it's a pretty decent card to work with, right? Um, from like the physical variables that you're working with. It's the five star skills against the park, the bus. You guys can see during the review, you know, going for an elastical to create space for yourself. Once you give him that finisher chemistry style, it's still a card that can cook. And to be honest, I have faced him sometimes in the higher divisions for people that want to, you know, work with different types of strikers in that position. And he still does a pretty decent job. Do I prefer him over, you know, choosing someone like Atenia? No, I think Atenia is definitely going to be the top choice in regards to the options that you have here. But he fits the criteria more for the play styles that EA are giving. So it just kind of makes sense to put him in the um, in the uh, A tier, A tier category, right? Um, sorry, I was showing the things here, the play styles, the power header, the acrobatic, like if you guys watch the review, I was able to utilize those two things on a pretty consistent basis, right? You'll use it more, especially if you go on the counter attack, because if you're up against the park, the bus, you kind of have to get into certain situations where it's like, oh, maybe he can get the, the jumping on the card. If he had the aerial, he would definitely get the jumping on the card. But it's just, uh, it's just one of those cards where like from the selections, the links that you can work with and stuff, it just makes sense for him as a free card, right? It just does. He's he just he's formatted for all those things. Um, we have this guy that I added here, too, because he actually has some capabilities where you could technically use him as an attacker. Is it say it's say it's say. I can't see this card right here. He's a Moroccan player. Is it SEI? I think Sabon. Is it Sabon? Which card is it? It's, it's one of these ones here. Uh, do, 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 do. It is. Oh, he's not even here. Am I blind? Mm 
No, I'm definitely blind. Why would I download him if he's not available? There he is. <laughs> I was about to say. I'm like, guys, I'm losing it, man. I'm losing it. Okay, so listen. This is a midfielder, right? It's a midfielder. It might make more sense to go in the midfield direction. Okay, it might. But he has potential to be pretty decent on the attack. Why? Because if you take a look at this card on the Eredivisie, this card has five-star skills, four-star weak foot. So by default, we're already working with some very good stuff. If you take a look at his dribbling capabilities, his dribbling is also formatted very nicely. This card has five-star skills with a four-star weak foot while being six foot one, and I can give him a hunter chemistry style to boost his pace and his shooting to be in a good area while being a physical type attacker, right? So when you come, when it comes down to the play styles, right? He has some things that could work out really nicely in the game, right? So technical, quick step, chip shot, slide tackle, acrobatic, and power header would actually make sense for a card like this in game because he actually has the physical capabilities to do it. So in game guys, this guy has the potential to be an A tier category card. So for me, what I'm gonna actually do is I'm gonna add him in here, but he is the absolute top tier option for a card that is not sure, didn't use, could be good slash okay, right? Um, but I wouldn't even say it could be good slash okay. This card has more potential than some of these attackers up here, to be honest, as a physical type attacker. So really look into that one if you are going more in the sentimental route of Eredivisie players. The reason why he joins that category, however, is because, again, you only have two options. Do I think he's gonna be the top option? Probably not. But if you guys are going for teams that have Eredivisie uh, players in it, he could be a decent option to work with, right? And he could cook because he's actually formatted incredibly nicely for the controlled lengthy on the Hunter Chemistry style with good dribbling on a five-star skill with good play styles, right? So that's why for him, He's going to join the top tier category for that specific area, right? Um, Wilms, don't bother. And then this guy, we have to see if he's set up. I think, oh, so these, these are the cards. So I think he's actually going to join the second place from the selections here. That could be good because with him, guys, I have to take a look at this. I think when I actually checked out the individual cards from this, I think the I even mentioned specifically that people that are going in the, in the route of Eredivisie, they're kind of cooking, right? Because they actually have some pretty good selections for cards that you would probably never see, right? So if we go to the FC attackers here and we take a look at a card like this. So right off the bat, there's certain things that are off because he's someone who is given the power header and the acrobatic, but that's not really his sort of play style. However, the way that this card is formatted in game is that he still has 90s for dribbling stats and his shooting is put into a certain position where you could either go in the direction of giving him a hunter chemistry style or you can give him an engine if you want the dribbling to feel a little bit more improved because this card from base characteristics does have an average body type so that's where i feel like you know giving him an engine might be ideal if you're using him specifically in the cam position right because on the fc academy attackers you turn him into a four star four star player right and play styles wise, he has finesse shot, chip shot, relentless, Trivella, uh, Trivella to work with. So he does have base attacking stuff. But here's the thing. He also has the midfielders option, right? Who also looks like a very good card and he has a five star weak foot. So there's a couple of potential to work with there. It's not necessarily a situation where it's like a, a complete don't bother situation on him, but it's just a card that I'm gonna add into the second tier because he could be pretty decent to work with depending on how you're building your sort of squad. So if you're looking at this as an order, right? And I'm not just choosing these two because they're the most popular because if we do the defender one, I don't think Gomez is the top choice uh, and he was the most popular when it was released, not necessarily afterwards, right? But I even mentioned that he might not be the best choice because of the way that the card is formatted for the current meta of the game. But I'm completely comfortable with this tier list. Brian, if he gave him, if they gave him five star skills, I would actually add him into the S tier. So that's why for me, he joins the A tier at the top because he's still gonna be a player that can move pretty well in the meta of the gameplay. I just think that the, the top tier choices 
from the two selections that you have are cards that you shouldn't miss out on if you are not going the sentimental route because some of these sentimental routes for some of these cards guys like i said with the air division players there's a lot of potential to work with there but i think for longevity of the game Atenia, Okafor are definitely going to be the top two, but depending on the situation of your team, if you're having some sort of Liga Santander links, because remember that these guys give you that extra chemistry to work with on top of their, you know, in his case, Spanish Liga Santander links, then Rodri could be a decent option to go with too. I, do I think that in a general sense, these two are the top two choices? Yes, but again, it really depends on the situation of your club. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed that video today. If you guys want to see more of these types of videos, be sure to leave me a comment down below. Like the video if you enjoyed it. All that good stuff. I'll catch you guys for the next one. Peace out, dudes. Love you guys.